Hi people. I wanted to do a quick demo to introduce some of the new features of the new Java-based Norl. The main reason for writing it in Java was to eliminate the increasingly problematic issues of keeping Norl cross-platform. Now it should run on Mac, Windows, Linux, and others without problems. In fact, now you can run it without even installing it by launching from a web browser. For more info on that, visit the web link listed in the video description. While the new Norl started as merely a port to Java, it became a chance to reorganize a lot of features that had gotten tagged on chaotically over the past decade. Thus, this really is an entirely new version, maintaining almost all of the old features of Norl but adding more. Commands have been greatly simplified to about a dozen keyboard shortcuts. They're all referenced here under the Help button. Meanwhile, Nora's functionality has dramatically increased. One of the most powerful new features is the ability to time drag. That's basically dragging the mouse over the, uh, the graph while pressing the T key uh, to shorten or lengthen schedule live as you're hearing it. Similarly, another feature is called scale drag. That's where by holding the S key and scaling upward, you can actually live do it. Uh, given the unearthly theremin-like sounds you can create using these two features alone, the new functionality can almost be used like a DJ scrubbing on a turntable. To save time, I'm going to skip creating a new schedule and just use the default schedule because uh, it's, it's, this thing can be turned into something. What I'm going to show you is what I'd call a micro loop, which is where I take something. This is an hour and 13 minutes long, this original one. I'm going to shrink it down to about uh for for let's see four hundredths of a second i guess it would be uh first of all let's hit play just so we've got the old familiar normal sound the u meter says i'm well into the safe zone here i'm going to delete the noise which is just control um, delete and now by the way in terms of selecting points dragging over them with the mouse is as it always used to be but now I can click anywhere in the graph and not deselect points. Uh, I found that that was more of a hindrance than anything. Now if you want to deselect, hold shift. And you can deselect all you want. And what gets used most often is just A to deselect all and A to select all. It toggles between both. Now if I select all and then I click in the graph, hold the T, and start shrinking this downward by dragging to the left. I, once I'm to the left of the point where I clicked at, I can just do anything over here to keep going. Oh, I had it only going for one loop. If you look up here at the upper right, because we're taking an hour and 13 minute long whatever uh, schedule and turning it down to 400 of a second, I need it to run basically infinitely. So I'm going to put a zero in there. Be sure to hit enter at the end of it just so that to avoid problems. Basically in Java, if you don't hit enter at the end of any text things, it just does not take them. And now I'm going to hit play again. Already we've taken an hour long schedule and it's 40 seconds long, but that's nothing. We're going to continue going down. Now it's down to about three seconds, two seconds. it's already done almost 2,000 loops here. If I hit the bass frequency, I can just grab dots. Holding the Y key keeps it in there. I can, I can live do that to it. But I can also do things uh, with the scale key, which is a lot more like you create an early 70s album that way. That's the magnetic pointer, that's what that means. So you've got three techniques so far. You've got time drag, T, moving left or right with it. Scale dragging, going up and down with the S key pressed. Now if I move around with the M key, 
data points will just be attracted to the cursor. It's a great way to quickly move points around a graph. Also, I don't like the way these are spaced out because they're sort of designed for the original Norl, which has these funny spikes in it, uh, which for this dubstep surrealistic thing we're doing, that's not really useful. So I'm going to press E to open the... Uh, this is one of the most powerful features, by the way, the select, uh, edit selected data points. You can do them in mass. I'm going to give them all 0.01. Every single one now is 0.01. By the way, I'm going to undo that for a second and show you something really amazing. If I were to put a times in front of this and put minus one, this will multiply the whole thing by minus one. It actually reversed it. Not that you heard much. Um, actually, I'll demonstrate that in an even more dramatic way. I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning. Control D's. Control Z's, I mean. Let's go a little forward till I've gotten rid of the... Uh... Yeah, that's good. I'm just going to use the edit here and pretty much do the same thing we did before, which is 0. 0.00001 times in front of it so it's scaling. There we go. That's pretty darn close. 0.0441. Going back to base, I'm going to press the magnetic key again. And I'm going to open the edit and I'm going to put a 0.1 in there so that each of the data points lasts for 100, actually 0.01. I can press F here to bring up a filter, which can get rid of some of the extra ones. If you notice, it just kind of cleans it up. There are two types of filters. They work better, and each one has its strengths, depending on what you have in there. I'm just going to get rid of a few of them. The other trick you can do is select all. Uh, press the D key. It duplicates them. And using that edit key, I can also invert here, and then using edit, I can strike it. And we'll just scale. Ooh, sounds like Sputnik or something. Just sort of the point, I have no idea where this is going to go. I just wanted to <laughs> display some of the different things we can do here. Um, I can also do it, what's called an interval select, which is where I press I and uh, let's say I want to select every third data point. Boom. Just, and then I can just delete them. thing I'm going to show you is just duplicating the voice. So I'm going to take this voice, shift D duplicates it. As you notice, the volume immediately goes up because you essentially doubled your volume. You got two. I'm going to just bring it out of the yellow. When you're in red, you're really in trouble. Yellow is still acceptable. Now, for basic editing in Neural, getting rid of what you're not working on is crucial. Right now you can't see the second voice because it's right on top of the first. If I select all on this one and then show the one underneath, I'll notice... I'll do some interesting things. I think I'm going to actually reverse this second voice. Times minus 0.9, let's just do... One's going one way, the other one's going the other way. I'm going to hide that first voice so that I can... By the way, you can time drag just selected points, too. At a new point, you just double click, just like the old normal. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> I think 
think we're too far down. There we go. Gotta get the graph back. <laughs> Everything you ever dreamt of. Let's work on the first one. schedule to reach my family. Just kidding. There we go. That actually is kind of interesting. I could actually add a new voice. set your binaural beats or isochronic tones or raindrops or noise, etc. Uh, yeah, I realize this has been a bit chaotic, but at least you can see some of the things that Noral does. Thank you. 